Sophie, hello. Welcome to Midlands Today with Suzanne Verdi and Nick Owen. The headlines tonight. After seven years and a £2 million bill for taxpayers, a whistleblowing heart specialist finally clears his name. There has to be a serious review of procedures in the NHS before whistleblowers can feel safe if they want to do that in the interests of patient safety. The Health Secretary gets a first-hand update on life on the wards after the Stafford Hospital scandal. I'm very shocked and appalled, as will NHS workers around the country, as were NHS workers in this hospital. Here's the news, by young people, for young people. And up for auction, the personalised number plates for our esteemed presenters, Susie and T-Boy. Hello, good evening and welcome to Thursday's Midlands Today from the BBC. Tonight, the whistleblowing heart specialist who's finally cleared his name after a monumental seven-year battle. Around two and a half million pounds of public money was spent investigating Dr Raj Matu, but the General Medical Council has cleared him of all charges. The Shadow Health Secretary was on a visit to the West Midlands today, launching a new policy to encourage whistleblowers to come forward. But will they? And will they be protected if they do? We'll speak to him in a few minutes, but first of all we have two special reports, beginning with our health correspondent, Michele Paduano. Packing his bags to go back to London for retraining, after seven years he's to be taught all over again. But a former world-renowned heart specialist, he's lost a career and the best years of his life. I'm hoping now that the entire case against me has finally been concluded, I've been exonerated that the Trust will now sort out what needs to be done such that I'm properly and fully reinstated. These files represent the 150 allegations and some of the 20,000 pages of documents. The Trust has admitted to nearly £2 million in costs. Some argue it's £5 million. Although University Hospital Coventry in Warwickshire let him back after five and a half years, it's continued its allegations through the General Medical Council. The verdict of the GMC begs the question, what has the past eight years been about and why did they occur? And somebody somewhere has to be answerable for those eight years. Dr Raj Matu blew the whistle over two deaths that he was aware of in overcrowded hospital bays at a time when the hospital's death rate was far higher than at Stafford Hospital now. There was no oxygen available for the patient. We could not have any suction to suck out the vomitus from the main airways. We could not give the patient the opportunity of defibrillation. Today visiting Stafford Hospital, the Secretary of State said he wanted to encourage clinicians to speak out. With the new leadership coming in, that will create a more open spirit where people feel free to raise their concerns in a way that perhaps they felt inhibited about in the past. The Union Workers Association believe that Dr Matthew's treatment is racist and has demanded a public inquiry. They didn't take any action against the white consultants, but they just picked on non-whites. For Raj and his fiancée, it's a chance to start again, but would he encourage anyone else to blow Cheers. the whistle? Cheers. There has to be a serious review of procedures in the NHS before whistleblowers can feel safe if they want to do that in the interests of patient safety. What happens this summer? When we get married. <laughs> Can't believe it, can you? No. <laughs> it's finally, finally we can get on with our lives. The hospital says only that it takes its responsibility as an employer seriously and always endeavours to act in the public's best interests. Michele Paduano, BBC Minutes Today. And further concerns about the role of whistleblowers in the health service have been raised after two hospital staff contacted their MP with claims about chronic hygiene failures. He says they showed him photographs of mouse droppings in an operating theatre and smears of blood in wards at a West Midlands hospital. Which one, neither he nor they will say, as our political editor Patrick Burns explains. What do you do if you work in a hospital and you believe you have damning evidence of dirty wards and operating theatres? 
The MP, who was shown the photographs, says the two whistleblowers, both constituents of his, believe even contacting him puts them in breach of their contracts, so he's not naming either them or their hospital. I passed Alan Johnson, the Secretary of State for Health, a note. I told him the name of the hospital, but I said it had to be confidential because that was the promise I made to the people who came to see me. And I've been trying to contact the people because Alan Johnson gave the offer to say, look, let's meet up. And I want them to see Alan Johnson for two reasons. Firstly, I want them to explain to him precisely why whistleblowers in the National Health Service are frightened of their jobs being lost. And two, I want them to explain in detail about all the issues going on in that particular hospital. Lawyers believe health service whistleblowers acting in the public interest may be in a stronger position than they themselves think. Ideally, of course, they should talk to their employers first. If um, you've tried that route and it hasn't worked, or if you feel there is an exceptionally serious issue that needs to be discussed, then provided you're acting in good faith as an employee and not doing it for personal gain, then um, yes, you can raise it with an external body. The Department of Health tell me they are investigating these claims, which they take extremely seriously. They say staff and clinicians should not be afraid to raise concerns, especially if they feel that important issues of health and safety are being compromised. Patrick Burns, BBC Midlands.